Have you ever checked in? Have you ever wire tripped? This is not like TV only metaphor. This is life. Hey everyone, welcome back to Sneak Door TV and our coverage of Melbourne Regionals 2017. I'm Miles and with me is... Asher. Hello. And Asher, isn't that you on the right? It is me on the right. Wow, you're playing HB, that's cool. And uh, we got Rob on the left. Yeah, playing... like, what an unusual set of IDs. Like, HB, nobody plays ETF. And Adam, well, that's just something you, you don't ever see. Yeah, Rob's signature Adam deck. Adam, he's his boy from a long time back. Asher, a long time. Is HB, ETF, your, like, boy? Oh, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> I, 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 I try and... I, I'm, a, I'm a hipster. Yeah. I, I played Soul for a really long time. Potential Unleashed. I, I mean, ETF is actually... like I'm, I, I'm joking a bit. Like, ETF is a, a great classic. Totally. And right. Estelle Moon, well, that's... That's not classic. That's just way too good. Alright, so we see you opening up with a pretty dang strong play here with Turtlebacks Moon Remote. That's pretty good. Is that what you want sort of every time with this deck? Well, it's a, it's a pretty established deck right now. Like, a, anyone who's played Netrunner competitively in, like, the last month or two has seen, like, this Estelle Moon asset spam deck. And it just, like, it, there's a reason it's named after Estelle Moon. Well, two. One being that, like, Estelle Moon is, like, the new card that makes it really so much better than it used to be. But... Actually, that, I forgot where I was going. Estelle Moon is just really, really good. She is really And good. The, the fact that she essentially turns every install into three things, like two credits and a card, is just absolutely unprecedented. Just insane click compression. Yeah, it's like if every click was a security testing Desperado run or a security testing John Messinori run. It's just you were getting so much for every click with Estelle Moon in play. And... They, they can't even proactively trash her because as soon as they trash her, you just as soon as they run at her server, you use her effect. Okay, so we got two upgrades going on down here. What are these? What's going on here? So, it, it's been like a month now, and I've totally forgotten the list. But I think they're Mumbed Virtual Tours. So oh, like, that's gross. It's a it's a really nice card when you're playing with friends in high places because you can just bring them back in whatever server the run is going to run, and in a deck that already taxes both clicks and credits really aggressively. The credit tax can be really punishing. Yeah, absolutely. And Adam has to trash things as well. Yeah, so which, um, let's see what he's got. So he's got the Find the Truth. Uh, he doesn't play Always Be Running, so he's got all the others. He's looking at the top card of R&D. He's trashing everything. Mm -hmm. He's um, accessing two cards from HQ. Yeah, but he can't currently get into HQ. He's got a Mammon. What are you talking about? Well, you know, well, well he didn't currently get into HQ. Maybe should I put it, should put it that Yeah. Way. And he, so here's Ooh, Hellion, Hellion Beta, Beta test, test, which is a really spicy card in this matchup because Adam has to run and he has to trash. So you, you're also going to have an econ advantage because HB just does that really better than anyone else in the faction, or better than any other ID in the faction. So being able to just like pull the directives away from Adam is probably what ended this game faster oh, than anything else. That's horrible. You just blew up his stuff. So he's still got Find the Truth, but he's lost safety first oh to God. neutralize all threats. And that looks like an ELP in the middle of the table, although the glare is kind of making it a little hard to read. That is an ELP. That is a horrible card. Well, this is horrible in general so far. Uh, this is Moon's doing its thing really well. Yeah. Um, which is just making the runner have a bad time. Oh, yes. <laughs> and one of the interesting things about Moon's is that um, it's a deck that really... Um, has a lot of flexibility in deck design. Like, you can play Hellion Beta Test as a one-of, or Hellion Alpha Test. No, this one is Beta Test, yeah. You can play it as a one-of, and sometimes you'll see, you'll see it a lot of the time because you go through most of your deck, and the, the runner doesn't have a reasonable way to say yes, you'll have it, or yes, you won't have it. Like, the decks have kind of coagulated, but I feel like the fact that the Mooney decks have coagulated into, like, familiar lists makes the surprise cards even even more powerful. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, a, a couple of little tech cards, or not even tech cards, just spices in a known list can go a really long way. Like, but um, Adam's also really exciting for that, because, like, Adam, you really don't know what they're playing when they play Adam. And, like, part that could be partly just because it's such a inherently rogue thing to play. But Adam has so much flexibility. Like, 
Adam, you're, he's flexible from the time you plop him on the table because you get to choose which of like four configurations you're going to going to go with depending on what the opponent's playing. Yeah, you never know what um, <laughs> kind of Adam it's going to be. This is like a prepaid AI deck, I think it is, having played against Rob a bit and sort of seen Rob play. So the only break is like Overmine and Mammon and always be running. And you have prepaid voice pad and events and just weird stuff. But you could do anything with that. You could do really bizarre things. Oh, yeah. And, like, always be running plus neutralize all threats is just, like, one of the best ways to open a game, just period. Yeah, totally. <laughs> just go in and start seeing two out of HQ. And that's how Rob wins a lot of his games is double accessing HQ, running R&D only when it's going to matter. Yeah. Because he's got Find the Truth up. But, unfortunately, you've taken all those delightful options away from him. Right. Because you're awful. There's another card that, like, <laughs> makes Adam really sad. Like, this is, we're totally off the topic of the match right now, but, like, the best defense, now that I think about it, is another thing that, like, Adam doesn't like to see. And, like, I, if you're Adam, you really have to be careful about those directives. You heard it here first, folks. If you're scared of Adam, put in best defense. <laughs> so, meanwhile, this, like, this moon deck is just kind of churning through and, like, there's no agenda scored at this point in the game, but they're going to be scored, I'm pretty sure, really soon. Just on the basis of, like, everything, like, all the ducks are in a row. Yeah, so now you're in the really fantastic position where you install a card, you gain three credits and a moon counter. If you install again, you're going to gain two credits and a moon counter. It's just unbelievably solid. And it's just doing what this deck does best, which is compressing many, many clicks into one click. Right. And then forcing the runner to have to deal with the results of all these compressed clicks, which is impossible. Because ELP is out. Is that accurate? Yeah. So there's a part of me that's looking horrifiedly at my credit total because I think I double took the HB install credit that turn. And this is like something that like, I mean, I, I'm, I'm really ashamed of myself for using dice all the time, but like dice doesn't really help with that. It's just a matter of like the credits having to move so quickly because there's so many board state changes in this deck. Yeah, look at all these triggers that are happening. It's disgusting. Yeah. I like it a lot. So, <laughs> like, that's... That's a problem that Netrunner has, like, in tournament play in general. Like, there's so many little triggers that, like, y you end up having to do so much accounting. But, like, the Moon deck in particular, like, one of the most challenging things about playing that deck, and I see everyone having trouble with this, one of the most challenging elements of it is just getting everything in the right order. Because there's so many steps that you have to do. There's so many little sequencing tricks that you can do with the deck. Like, just all the advanced assembly line of Stell Moon shenanigans alone. And it's a deck that really rewards really good sequencing. And doesn't overly penalize bad sequencing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so what's your plan here? You're um, just getting some assets down. And how are you going to score? In a remote or just in the middle of a bunch of other things? This list plays, I think, one or two biotics and yeah. a lo only three twos in global food. So your plan is generally to score two three twos in global food, usually with biotics. Like you can score even like global food initiative with I think two biotics and a Jeeves or something like that. Like you're you're very rarely going to be scoring behind a remote. Okay, and Jeeves up opens up a lot of plays for you too, I would imagine. Yeah, Jeeves is such a good card. Jeeves is insane. I can't believe the trash cost on that thing. It's just unbelievable. Fire. I feel like every time I go to a tournament, like I see someone who has two Jeeves, one res and one not, and I don't even bother trashing them because it's like, yeah, I have to deal with ten trash costs to turn off this effect. Unreal. Too much. So much. <laughs> no one can pay ten. Um, so actually asking a remote here. Yeah. Well, I mean, Adam right now isn't getting in anywhere, let's be honest. Yeah, it's pretty gross. Like, I'm, I'm not going to say there's there's no lock in this deck. There's never a lock, really, in this matchup. It's just a matter of, like, the, the runner being unable to check things. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So, do you remember off the top of your head if that is an agenda there? Or? I couldn't tell you. Okay. So, it looks like Rob has, to, has sort of gone, all right, I can't attack that. I've got to build up a little bit and prepare to attack things in the future, which is probably a smart play. Yeah. Um, working with what he's got, which is, you know, a bit dangerous. He's working with what he's got. I love that Ash on HQ. It's so mean. He got in and you just, like, can't even do anything about it. It's so yeah. mean. <laughs> I mean, thinking about it, I probably did that because there were, like, there was one or two agendas in there. Mm. And Rob's deck, like, especially with the... Well, getting rid of the directives doesn't really change much, but just, like, after having taken so many little tempo hits, just... By, by virtue of having to try and contest things, he's very poor. Yeah. Like, I mean, really, really poor. This is what these decks are kind of about, though, aren't they? They're just um, 
little, the, yeah, little bits that build up, like you said, like, and this is what the NEH decks were like as well, the turtle backs and team sponsorships. Yeah. You put back enough really high priority things that the runner has to deal with it, and eventually they maybe can't. That's one of the things that actually like makes Moons and like the old style NEH so much like better than a lot of similar corp decks. Like they they have proactive plans. If you don't do anything against a lot of corp decks, you can just get money and keep them from scoring. If you don't do anything against this deck, you are going to get buried in effects that keep you from doing that. Yeah, that makes yeah exactly like um like now there's Lakshmi Smart Fabrics and like that's another thing he has to contest to be able to play the game in the first place. Yeah, because he can't he won't be able to actually steal anything that he touches. Um, what would you say is it? Do you mean like when you're comparing this to other decks? Do you mean like Gagarin Asset Spam something like that? Well, Gagarin Asset Spam's its own, like, little beast, but, um, I mean, just in comparison to, like, HB Fast Advance, for instance, which is, it's an okay deck, but it's clearly not this deck's power level. Yeah. Or, like, HB Glacier. Glacier is, like, the most classic of Netrunner, like, of Netrunner, like, corp decks, mm -hmm. and it's very good in its own right, but, like, it has the problem where, like, a runner that's very well equipped can just stop it from scoring. Yeah, that was always the, especially, actually, I guess that's just the Whalen problem, isn't it? Really? Oh, it's the Whalen problem yeah. <laughs> in a nutshell. Yeah, eventually the Rhino just can deal with all your, your stuff, and you won't have a problem. Because um, they'll just go, I guess, I mean, you have a curtain wall, but I can just go past it, <laughs> eventually. Especially in that Rhino sort of economy situation now. It just, um, both sides have access to really, really insane economy options. Oh, yeah. How good is IPO, though? IPO is okay. I think IPO is really good. I think it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not in this deck because it's too clunky. Yeah, that's fair. I think in a lot of decks, IPO is really, really good. One thing about IPO that's kind of been bugging me, and this isn't really an indictment of the card. It's a really good card. There I said it. It's a really good card. There's Yay. your answer. <laughs> but one thing that's been bugging me is that it really encourages operation-based econ strategies, but those end up actually like feeling so much worse than... like than other econ plans. Like, the problem with Ops Econ is you get siphoned and that's the entire opposite of an IPO and they get 10 credits. Mm -hmm. Like, you get, you res your DNA tracker and that's two hedge funds down the drain. If you had like a Sundu and you protected it, that wouldn't be an issue. But if you just have to play your two hedge funds to get your DNA tracker money, that represents a really significant investment in cards and clicks into like the one piece of ice mm. and i see like people all the time myself included we play three dna tracker without really a great econ plan for resing them that's the other thing about this uh, about moons like it doesn't play any ice that costs more than six fairchild is where the curve tops unless you're a madman <laughs> pure oh i'm sure some people have res wotan out of this you oh, could <laughs> you could i mean look at that 34 credits that's obscene all right, so Rob's setting up. Rob knows he's got to do something about this, and he's going to give it a red-hot go. Um, loading up his mammon. He's got a little bit of daily cast money, and he's going to he's going to have a swing at this. Is it's this gonna... a caprice? Ooh, an interdiction. Very nice. So that'll shut down any caprice business that's going to happen. But can he actually get in? It's probably not a caprice. I don't I don't think it is. Oh, he's going for HQ. Okay. Maybe it is. Um, I only say that because I know a lot of these decks do play caprice. <laughs> And he's mad dashing HQ because this is a true Rob play. Oh yes. When Rob Rob sees he's in a bad. The madman. <laughs> oh no, Hellion Beta Test number two. I think it might have been reshuffled. Wait, I don't oh, see a no. Jackson. Oh, it was um, it was clone separate. Oh gross. Uh, yeah, I like this. Rob's just gone, man. I'm in a rough spot. I'm gonna do a mad dash, like in the true spirit of the card, where it's like, my god, I need to win. Let's go. Have you ever had a game where like you ran R and D twice and you saw two like four points of agendas and you just thought, man, if I had a mad dash, I would just run R and D a third time because if I won that way, it would be the most yeah fantastic way to win Netrunner. Yeah, that would be amazing. Did you see there was like a really notorious game from like a stim hack tournament or something like years ago, a couple of years ago, where there was someone was playing a government takeover deck, Ooh. and like that basically happened where they ran R and D turn one and saw the government takeover and. You know, just sort of one off the back of it. It was great. Oh, no, ELP. Oh, my God, friends in high places. So, based on that, I think I've got a GFI in there. And once once, once the deck's at five points, it's like a lot of HP decks. Like, you just sort of 
have to really cross your fingers and hope you can steal a lot of points before they get to their biotic and their 3-2 together. Yeah, it's just biotic time. And by this time, surely you have a biotic and a 3-2. Yeah. Like, it just seems... <laughs> you've drawn a lot of cards off Moon. You, draw, you drew, what, like seven or eight extra cards off Moon? Which is madness. Oh, yes. Complete There's madness. a lot about this deck that's madness. Like and thinking it. about it, like, I've played Friends multiple times at this point in the, in the match. Mm. Like... I could think of many really aggressive sequencing options involving, like, frenzing moons, for instance. Like, but honestly, like, not to put Rob down, he's a great player and this is an amazing deck, but, like, at this point I could just kind of do a lot of things because the, um, the deck is just so far ahead. Yeah, exactly. You're just really strongly ahead on the game. Which is a shame because I really wanted to see Rob's decks do cool things because we've had it on the channel before. It is dope. A lot of the time he just wins out of nowhere. He just does pressure all the time, and it's really exciting. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, like, 90% of Netrunner is play. Like, I mean, you could... You still have to have a good deck, but, like, you can win a tournament. You can win a regional with basically any deck. Yeah. You just have to play it really well. We've seen it. This season. Oh, yes. The 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 Deus Ex Adjusted Matrix deck. Oh, I was so mad about that That's because I was playing Deus Ex Adjusted Matrix... And I thought it was too weak to bring to a regional. <laughs> yeah, that's because that's Baram, right? Yeah. And he's, he's amazing. He, but he's a good player <laughs> playing a great deck. Yeah, he just does really cool things. He always wins with really weird decks. I like it. Hey, it looks like there's probably a team sponsorship and agenda into the remote, judging by the amount of time this video is left. Yeah, I love when you're just so far ahead that you can do plays like team sponsorship back agendas. Well, you team sponsorshiping play? agendas is great. Oh yeah, I loved playing um, like any edge against noise, like ages ago, where you would just do stuff like that. And yeah, you team just... sponsorship the agendas in like into play. Yeah, and you're like, thanks, noise, you found my <laughs> agenda for me. That's really cool of you. There's actually an interesting thing you could do like in this deck as well, where you end up um, being really happy that they trashed your assets off of R and D, because then you can friends them back. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you never like trash assets off R and D against this deck, but it's something you shouldn't do a lot of. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, trashing assets out of R and D is often wrong. I think, like in general, unless you're getting more accesses, it depends on the situation. If you're a wizard, you might as well. Yeah, if you're a wizard, you can do it. Um, and that might even be better. Wow, this is so bad for Rob. Yeah, I. <laughs> Like, maybe if you have film critics, stim hack and get very lucky. I know. There's, like, a chance to steal an agenda at this point in the game. I feel like you're just swag resing everything at this point. Um, well, I think I think it's probably two agendas in HQ, which mm. is, like, why the Lakshmi is at five. Yeah, you just spend three and then two and just like, hey, you can't ever steal anything now. Yeah. Yeah, works. Seems good. Well, uh, so Moons is good. Oh, the real yeah, I, I think we've... I, I was really skeptical at the start of this video, let me tell you. That Moons was good? Yeah. <laughs> wow. And yet, here you are. <laughs> um, so we've all learned something in the Netrunner community today. Really. Well, you didn't even reveal anything else. You were just like, here's a GFI. Oh, yeah, because the 3-2's the in the server. Yeah, of course, and he's just Dean Listering. I like it. So one of the things I really like to do when I'm watching Netrunner videos is try and guess how much everyone's going to throw for Caprice. So I want everyone to pause the video now and make a guess. I don't remember what it was myself. I guess... Oh, there we go. Nice. Zero to two. That's balls. All right, nice. Well played, Asha. Moon's dim to death. Well, well played, Rob. I, I'm... If it was anything but a regional, I would apologize. <laughs> We win filthily. All right, cool. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We will see you next time for our continued regionals covering. Catch you next time.